Hi everyone, in this video I am going to be talking about why fallopian tube blockages happen and how we can correct at least one of them very easily. Now fallopian tube is the place where the eggs and the sperms meet to make a baby. It is responsible in 40% cases of female infertility. Fallopian tube blockages can happen because of a variety of reasons. We are not going to go into the details in this particular video. But as you see here, there are three areas or three points where the fallopian tube blockages can happen. Point number three, that is the fimbrial end of the fallopian tube can get blocked. If it gets stuck to the surrounding structures, if you go to another video of mine on this YouTube channel, which is the why, when and how of fallopian tube testing, you can actually see how the fimbrial end is stuck to the side walls and how with the help of scissors, I have released the fallopian tube at the fimbrial end to let it fall into its natural space and the fallopian tube then gets open. At the point number two, that is the midpoint of the fallopian tube, this gets blocked due to infection. It's not really amenable to much treatment and these tubes cannot be opened or rectified once they are damaged. At point number one, which is the cornual end of the uterus, where the uterus and the fallopian tube joins, this part of the fallopian tube can get blocked very, very easily because of small debris, small little tissues flying from the uterus and getting blocked or getting the mouth of the fallopian tube blocked at that point in time. Sometimes it can happen even due to spasms. So if pain happens, this part of the involuntary muscles contract and cause blockages of the fallopian tube. We will find out in this video how with a simple procedure we can open up these blockages at the cornual end. HSG is a simple test of testing the openness of the fallopian tubes. Dye is pushed through the vagina into the uterus. You could see the uterus in the previous section. Dye comes out from one side, this is the right side and then the left side so you know the tubes are open. Then when you push more dye, more dye is going to come out from the right side and then from the left side so you know in the overall picture that the fallopian tubes are open. In this picture you see the uterus is filled with a radio opaque dye when the x-ray has been taken but both the cornual ends are blocked. No dye has flown into the fallopian tube and then come out of the fallopian tubes into the uterus. So we know that the cornual ends are blocked. If in such a scenario we continue pushing more dye into the uterus with force, when the dye does not go into the cornual ends of the fallopian tube, it starts to move into the blood vessels which are supplying the uterus. And this is the appearance that you get a halo around the uterus wherein we know that the dye has now entered the blood vessels confirming to us that the cornual ends of the tube are blocked. Such a patient is not going to be able to get pregnant naturally and will only require an IVF to get pregnant unless we manage to open up the fallopian tubes. Let's see how we can do this. We're now inside the uterus with a process called hysteroscopy. You can see the video in another se section on the same YouTube channel. What we are going to do is put in a cannula that is the cornual end of the uterus now we're going to put in this cannula, open up the blockages, also push a blue dye through this tube. So certain small little bits and parts which might be blocking the mouth of the fallopian tube will actually pass right through. Sometimes we even push a guide wire through this outer catheter and that guide wire passes through this opening right through the fallopian tubes and opens up the blocks. It's a very very simple procedure done under anesthesia, does not cause any discomfort to the patient and hardly takes a couple of minutes. So we've managed to open one block or at least we think we've managed to open one side of the block. We'll now go on to the other side and see if we can open up the other block as well. So now this is the other side. We're pushing blue dye again through this opening, hoping that the dye is going to open up the fallopian tube. Now we are now inside the tummy via laparoscopy and you can see a lot of blue dye has come. Where did that dye come from? The dye came from the uterus and through those catheters 
when we were pushing in at the carnival end so we know immediately that the fallopian tubes are open but let's prove it further so we are now pushing dye from below and you see the left fallopian tube has dye coming out similarly on the right side as well we have the blue dye coming out so this patient now has bilateral open fallopian tubes hopefully should be able to get pregnant naturally should not require an ivf and that is the end of my video thank you so much for loving me sharing my videos for showing so much of appreciation please subscribe to my channel please share this video with anyone you think might benefit by watching this video